Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at two critical mistakes new investors make when it comes to staking their cryptocurrencies. I see a lot of videos online when it comes to uh, how to make money from staking your crypto, how much money you can stake from your crypto, how long is it going to take to be a millionaire staking your crypto, which have all got fantastic information. But two key critical areas that I want to focus on today will help understand when is a good time to be purchasing our cryptocurrencies that we would like to stake. So if that's a topic you're interested in, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, hit bell notifications so that you can see these videos pop up in your news feeds. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter for daily crypto updates. Let's dive in. So two critical mistakes. First up in the video, I'm going to go through just what is staking and have a look at some of the different types of staking, why staking and keep that quite brief because the main thing I want to go through are the mistakes. So first up, what is staking? So we've got two different types where there's actually only one type, but a lot of people confuse the two. The first is actually staking and staking is where users agree to pledge money to a network in order to help it validate transactions. Kind of like Cardano where you will stake your ADA to the network in order to validate the transactions and secure the network. The other is lending. So lending is where users agree to loan their cryptocurrencies in, uh, in return for interest payments. That's something like crypto.com or Celsius where you will put your cryptocurrency on that app, lock it up, kind of like a term deposit with a bank. They'll give you interest on that and then what they're doing with your cryptocurrency is lending it out to other uh, institutions or traders to trade with that cryptocurrency to use it as liquidity on other exchanges. So both concepts allow users to earn tokens, but the risks and rewards are different. Now the difference that I see here are centralized versus decentralized. One is staking where it's decentralized like the Cardano ecosystem, and there are plenty of others out there as well. I'm just talking about Cardano as it seems to be the most popular and, and one that people know. Centralized is of course something like Binance Exchange where you will put your cryptocurrency on the exchange. That's centralized, you don't own those keys. Uh, if you've been in crypto, you understand that. For new guys, you don't own them. If something happens to the exchange, you lose everything on that exchange. And so you can still stake your cryptocurrency on the exchange. So you're basically giving your control over to the exchange and then they're either one, um, staking it on the the decentralized platform of say Cardano or they're lending it out and they're just giving you a return either way. Now, why stake? Well, these are my options here. I like staking in the decentralized manner. That's to secure the network. So you're contributing to the project that you are investing in. You keep control of your money, again, using uh, Cardano as the example, you keep control of that ADA. If you have your own Yoroi Lite wallet, you transfer your ADA from whatever exchange into that wallet, you still control it. The money and the ADA continues to fluctuate at the same price as it does everywhere where else and you're able to either pull the money from the wallet and sell it or you can keep it in there and continue to earn interest. So the other point here is to earn income. And my opinion, because of these reasons, is I prefer it uh, better than stock dividends. The main reason is that I'm in control of my coins here. I control the wallet. I control my finances, my wealth that is on that wallet. And if I want to do anything with it, I can. Whereas with stocks, your stock certificate is still held by the organization who is looking after that to say that you do own these stocks. In the case of Australia, it's with Chess. And so they say you own these stocks of CBA and you can earn some dividends from them if there are dividends. Uh, whereas with the centralized nature, something like ADA, I own those ADA, they belong to me. Now with stocks, of course, you own them on paper, but I like to take it just that one step further and it's decentralized. So I have 100% control of it and if anything goes wrong, it's all up to me. We should look at some of the cautions that come with staking. So staking and lending do have their downsides. With staking, the network's volatility and longevity could have serious impact on your investment. That's what we're going to look at on the charts to see if we can spot some early warning signs to it being one of the critical mistakes for choosing a cryptocurrency based solely on its staking rewards and believing to hold that long term for the rewards. The, the ecosystem is still very, very young. As rewards are paid out, 
in the token of the network. A sudden drop in the network's value means your asset's value drops with it. If you decide to stake your coins in a network that gets hacked, the value of your investment could, uh, could also go down. If the network suddenly becomes less popular, that too could have an impact. So as much as we love to be moon boys on Twitter or online, anywhere else when it comes to our cryptos that we hold, there is the possibility of these cryptos becoming less popular and we just have to face the facts. This is investing and that's what happens. There are risks to the game. So looking at a decentralized option, of course, there is Cardano. Got the shirts on today. You can use something like Euroi Wallet and I do have a staking pool for Cardano. You can find a link to that down below. So you can stake though that ADA that you hold, delegate it towards the Investor Accelerator staking pool, which is the official staking pool, Cardano staking pool of the channel, and you will get your re rewards paid out every five days according to the Cardano ecosystem. That is when the rewards get paid out. So you just have to download this, transfer your ADA into it, and then stake it uh, and you own all of that yourself. There are videos on the channel, so go and check it out. Links are down below. Now to choosing a staking crypto. There are, of course, the fundamentals to it. I like to look at pumpamentals as well. Can this thing really pump up? And technicals. And technicals are what I'm going to focus on in today's video. Fundamentals are for another video. But I can show you this here. This is a great website. You can look at stakingrewards.com. And you can go through and look at all of the cryptocurrency projects which currently have staking rewards attributed to them and go through and start your fundamental research on them. We're going to focus on just a few today looking at the charts and looking at something that has pumped, something that hasn't, something that might be in an accumulation zone. But the main things we look at here are how much is staked. So we can see that, for example, Solana or Sol, which is actually being staked, there's 75.4%. Market cap is around this 56 billion. The rewards are 6.4% at the moment, but this can change just like the ADA one changes as well. And the current price of the particular cryptocurrency. Now, some of these aren't going to be accurate. I don't believe the Cardano one here is too accurate. It's more around that 45 to 5.5% return. But at the moment, it is showing up as 62 So just keep that in mind if you're using this website. But there are many, many pages to this, as you can see, up to 21 and more. And that will go through pretty much all of the uh, stake, stakeable cryptocurrencies you can find. So two more things here, the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefits, I obviously see them as being passive income. If you've got other ideas, let us know in the comments down below. But the main reason why people are buying something is because they, A, want to see it go up in price and two, potentially get some passive income from them. As we can see from the website here, something like Polkadot is receiving 13.2% paid per annum. Uh, in the DOT token. So depending on what price DOT is at the time that you sell it is obviously how much cash you will get back for it. But if you plan to hold it and just accumulate all of the staking rewards, then potentially you could end up with a lot more if that particular project goes up in value by a lot. That leads me to the drawbacks. Could the project become dead? It is very, very possible. Something like uh, what we've seen in the past, say Tron, it's not that it's a dead project, but it's just not performing as well as some of the newer projects. So you've got to weigh those up as well. So this is something that will come into your fundamental research. You've also got projects which, which were around from the previous cycle, from 2017, 2018, in, in the case of, say, Icon, which is ICX, or EOS, EOS. Those sort of things are, are down quite a lot in their dollar value or even their Bitcoin value, which is a big mistake, which we'll look at in just a moment. So these are things to consider when it comes to choosing your cryptocurrency, because although the rewards seem reasonably good, 5%, you know, it's, it's no 100x gain here on the rewards, unlike Pancake Swap, which is paying out at 63%. The 5% seems quite good, but if the project drops, then of course the value of what you're holding will drop as well. Speaking of Pancake Swap and their cake token earning reward of 63.5% leads me to the drawbacks. So we've looked at potential dead projects or projects which are just not getting the ground that they want to be, that they're not growing as much as they should be, or they're not keeping up to pace with something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, inflation is the next big killer. Inflation, 63%. If a cryptocurrency is getting paid out 63%, it is possible. Not always that it will happen, but it is possible that people will be selling some of these rewards. And so if they're selling the reward, that's obviously going to put pressure on the supply uh, and there might not be en enough demand. And then that, uh, that's obviously going to drop the price of the cryptocurrency as well. So there is a bit of a sweet spot in here, something not too low, which 
doesn't make it worthwhile to stake. There's no point in locking something up for 0.7%. But at the, uh, the other end of the spectrum, 63% could definitely put a lot of pr uh, sell pressure on the cryptocurrency itself. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the benefits versus the drawbacks of the project. Now onto the two big mistakes. First is Bitcoin pair for the long-term investing. A lot of people just look at the US dollar chart, but the big one to look at is the Bitcoin pair. So whatever crypto you love, maybe it's ADA, Cardano. I'll just keep using that as an example for the video. You wanna look at ADA against Bitcoin value. And the main thing we wanna see here is that it is rising against its Bitcoin value. Otherwise, all of these gains that we're making on our staking rewards and the potential gains on that cryptocurrency are going to be wiped out if you had just bought Bitcoin because they are dropping in value against Bitcoin and Bitcoin is actually rising in dollar value and will wipe out the, the reward value as well. I'll show you that on the chart. So that is a big one to pay attention to because investing in any of these, they could become dead projects or something that people aren't interested in anymore and therefore your investment could go down a lot, maybe close to zero. That's the risk and you want to reduce as much risk as possible for something that you are holding long term for the staking rewards because as you can see the rewards aren't that crash hot to be holding it for five months six months eight months or two months it needs to be year on year on year because the rewards are so small at five percent per annum the main thing you're looking at is something that will grow in value against usd and its btc value number two buying on the fomo or the hype as I said at, uh, beneath here, these two mistakes will quickly wipe out any gains. Now, I, I bring this up in, in particular now and making this video because uh, currently we're seeing a lot of these staking cryptocurrencies popping off and we can see that from the 24-hour gains here. Atom is starting to get a bit of a move on. Um, Tezos is popping, up, popping off as well. We have seen the likes of eGold, Elrond. We have seen Algo take off in the last couple of days. Um, Terra Luna is taking off a few weeks ago as well. So all of these are starting to pop off and it seems like it goes through these cycles of, wow, staking rewards. Let's all buy up these cryptocurrencies and then they plummet after that point. Not all of them, but it's just something to pay attention to, especially if you're looking to invest in something when it comes to uh, staking for these smaller rewards. 5%, 10% compared to the, the trading where we want the 100 Xs. Now onto my favorite part, which is the chart. So let's look at AVAX as an example. And we have the AVAX BTC pair. So I've got AVAX USD. We, what we can see here is the crypto spiked out. This is the FOMO and the pump into around $60. It has tapered off and then tanked back down to about eight or $9. Now, if we look at the potential rewards from AVAX, it's getting about a 9.5%. So the reward here, 9.5%. So if we were buying it on the hype at around this 40 to $60, which was basically just one day of absolute mayhem back in February where the market went crazy, uh, that 10% is really not worth it to be buying it on those days. I think that should go without say, but some people may miss that fact that it can pump really hard on that day. And at the time, it's really in the mindset that this thing is going up a lot higher. You know, if it's sitting around 40 or $50, the next psychological level is 100 and then 200. And then you start to think it's going to 500 or 1000. And before you know it, it's peaked out at around 59 or $60. And within a few months, we find ourselves all the way back down to about 9 or $10. So the 10% reward is not worth that risk. The risk of losing about 80%, 84% in this case. Now, of course, we can see the cryptocurrency work its way back up. And we've said, well, it's a long-term investment. I don't care. 50 bucks, I'll buy in on the hype and I will hold it no matter what. That is one way to look at it as well. What I would say there is check out the Bitcoin chart because at the time, maybe $50 was way up here and the current project is not even close to that Bitcoin price again. Again, we could say we're going to hold this thing long term and maybe it'll get back to that Bitcoin price and start to outpace Bitcoin's growth. That is what we want to look for. And that's what it looks like for Cardano at the moment. So this is the Bitcoin chart and then we'll look at the dollar chart. It did get way ahead of itself against its Bitcoin value. So it was outpacing Bitcoin's growth by a lot. And then it took a few years, came back down, lower bottoms, lower bottoms, 
And then it started to climb back out of these lows at a reasonable pace from earlier this year. So that is the sort of thing you want to look for. At least start to break some of the old tops. That is going to give a good sign of potentially this is a better long-term investment, even if it shoots up and then comes all the way back down. Remember, we're only getting about 4 or 5% return per annum. So as long as this thing stays above those levels that you bought in at as the market began to break the highs, because that's a real critical level, a critical um, bullish signal when it starts to break highs, so through this area of Feb, then it doesn't matter if it comes all the way, babe, all the way back down against the Bitcoin value. As long as it holds slightly higher lows, all the time that you are holding this as a long-term investment. That, w that will mean that you are gaining on USD value and on Bitcoin value because you want to reduce your risk, your exposure to the market. And exposing yourself to too many of these cryptocurrencies could leave you having a lot less in US dollar value in the long run. As we can see on the ADA USD pair, it also had a pretty hard time for quite a few years there, but then it has finally taken off and both charts are now in an uptrend and ADA BTC is preparing, might not, but it is looking like it wants to attempt to get back to an old all-time high level against Bitcoin value, which means it will be outpacing Bitcoin's growth. We're not there yet, but that's definitely something to keep an eye on in your cryptocurrency that you choose to stake. Same deal for Ethereum. Ethereum got ahead of itself and Bitcoin was outpacing the growth here until we started to turn around, break some of these highs through July 2020, and again, as it broke through this little top here, which was in August, it broke through in around January 2021. And then we went on the next charge in April, May that broke through these uh, all of these tops that were set from 2019 through to early 2021. So the trend is up here for Ethereum as another potential staking cryptocurrency. Now to some of the examples which have absolutely shot to the moon. And we'll also look at some of the old examples which might have been dead, but maybe are starting to accumulate at the moment. I'll show those on the charts. Now, of course, Solana, a great project, something that I'm a fan of on the channel. But of course, we are looking at really, really high prices, something that has shot straight up. You look at Solana BTC, the same sort of thing here. We've gone straight up. Does it mean that we're going to stop? Of course not. It does, there's no guarantees here. Maybe we shoot even further up the charts and then only come back down to where we currently are. There's all those possibilities. But of course, these are the safer areas to be buying in at, and then this is the hype area. So the main point here is, do we want to be buying on the FOMO for the, the purpose of staking only? If we are looking to do that, we're playing a really, really challenging game that has extremely high risk and very, very low reward because of the staking rewards. If you're looking to trade this, that's a different story. But of course, the purpose of the video is around the mistakes people make when it comes to choosing cryptocurrencies to stake. At the times, a lot of people are speaking of these cryptos to stake them and they're going to be fantastic. They're going to $1,000, but it's only a 6% reward. So 6% happens in a matter of seconds in cryptocurrency. So really take that in consideration. Check out your charts of the cryptocurrency that you want to invest in. And I know this because I see it pop up all the time on the channel lately and this will be different maybe you're watching this months in the future but at the moment people are saying what about mina what about near protocol and if we look at those charts those have also begun to shoot up now they could go even further i know that i know that but that is something to pay attention to especially when the fomo and the hype is going if your decision to buy something is based on staking it for those staking rewards so that you can earn a passive income now onto a cryptocurrency, which looks like it has an accumulation period here and potentially breaking out. You'll notice that it might be similar looking to something like Ethereum before, before it got the breakout. So you can see that we've got some highs and some lows and the market moving up and down in a little bit of a trading range, but then it started to get some higher lows on here. And you can see that quite clearly low and it's getting higher and higher and higher. Sometimes there's a bit of a washout and then the lows continue to get higher. So Adam has had those lows, a low, higher lows, a little bit of a washout, and then we're getting some higher lows again. Can this continue up? Of course, it's anyone's guess, and you might already have the answer if you're watching this uh, months ahead or even weeks ahead. But at the moment, it is looking like it's forming one of these patterns. We have to wait and see. Again, there's no guarantees. Looking back on some of the old projects from the 2017, 2018 era, something like EOS. Again, here is the chart. It got really hot 
imagine that. Imagine that's potentially Solana. You know, this is going really, really hot and heavy. We're up and this is going to be the next best thing. We can stake it. We can earn 6%. We're going to retire on this cryptocurrency. But what comes next is a mega, mega downtrend and bear market. Now, I'm not saying that is going to happen for Solana. It is just something to keep in mind if you are looking to buy at the extremes. It's basically just looking at the risk. Are we throwing ourselves at some risk, which we possibly don't have to, just for the sake of 5, 6, 9% per annum? Personally, it's not something that I would look at doing because this is a possibility for any cryptocurrency at the moment. Anything can change. It's a very early, uh, it's a very early space and there's a lot of development happening. This is just the case for EOS. And maybe this does start to come back and start to form its higher lows and begin to break its higher heights. This is a possibility for that cryptocurrency as well. So keep in mind where these highs and the lows are forming when you go to make your decision and when you're doing your research over your fundamentals of the project and also definitely look at the technicals, in particular, the cryptocurrency against the Bitcoin value. And the last one is ICON. As I mentioned this earlier in the, the video, we have some lows and we have potentially higher lows forming, but we just don't have the higher highs forming at the moment. So this is ICON BTC. If we look at the ICON USD, it has been going up, but it doesn't mean that it is a worthwhile investment, especially as Bitcoin has been going up in that same period. And this chart shows that, shows that it's getting crushed against Bitcoin. So they're the two critical mistakes that I see when it comes to choosing a cryptocurrency for the purposes of staking, to earn a passive income. Passive income is fantastic. I completely agree with getting yourself a passive income. If you want to learn more about that, check out the Investor Accelerator. The links are down below. There's 70 left in the early adopters package here. So it's 49 a month, 73 left. It's going at about five to 10 people per day. So make sure you check this one out down below. Links are down here for Patreon and you get all the exclusive content, complete post archives, weekly market videos and monthly market reports plus everything else down there. So is there anything else that you'd like to know about staking cryptocurrencies? Let us know in the comments down below. If you have any other questions as well, check them out in the comment section. Some of the services I was talking about were staking your cryptocurrencies with things like crypto.com. There's a link to this down below. This is to get your uh, passive income through lending, which may sound like staking as well. You're still getting an income. Otherwise, you've got Ledger hardware wallets, which you can find a link to down below as well. You've got Ledger Nano X, Ledger Nano S, and you can stake your Ethereum, for example, through a hardware wallet, which gives you that decentralized nature rather than something that is centralized. Now, this is easier to set up, which is why a lot of people use it, whereas hardware wallet is, it does take a few more steps to set up. And you can stake your ETH through something like Lido and earn yourself a, a 4 or 5% on your Ethereum. So the links to ledger, crypto.com are down below. You can stake your ADA with the investor accelerator staking pool using a Euro wallet, much easier to do. And I've got a tutorial on how to do that. The links are down below. And as I mentioned earlier, Patreon link to that is down below as well if you want to join us over there. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. I'll catch you on Instagram or on Twitter for crypto updates. Make sure you're following over there. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.